hi guys welcome to my youtube channel please kindly hit the subscribe button turn on your notification bell leave a comment down below i subscribe i'll do well to reply all your messages thank you very much for watching it's about the likelihood of a second presidential debate between president trump and his democratic challenger joe biden the plan was to hold a virtual debate because of mr trump's uh, recent treatment for covid but the president said that that would be a waste of his time Last night saw the only face-to-face -face debate between the vice presidential candidates, Mike Pence and Kamala Harris, as our North America editor, John Soper, reports. Never before has a VP debate been so important, and there's a reason for that. With both presidential candidates well into their 70s, the old phrase about the number two being only a heartbeat away from the Oval Office has never seemed more relevant. In the debate between Mike Pence and Kamala Harris, COVID was centre stage, although divided by plexiglass. The American people have witnessed what is the greatest failure of any presidential administration in the history of our country. But I want the American people to know that from the very first day, President Donald Trump has put the health of America first. Whatever the vice president is claiming the administration has done, clearly it hasn't worked. But when you say what the American people have done over these last eight months hasn't worked, that's a great disservice to the sacrifices the American people have made. This debate had none of the histrionics and shouting of last week in what felt like a nil-all draw. To be honest, the most exciting bit came when a very black fly landed in Mike Pence's very white hair and stayed there. President Trump and I stand with you. It ended with this trail ahead. The second presidential debate is next week on October 15th, a town hall style debate in Miami. But this morning, the independent commission that runs the presidential debates ruled that next week's encounter should be virtual. The president's reaction, a furious, I'm out. No, I'm not going to waste my time on a virtual debate. That's not what debating's all about. You sit behind a computer and do a debate, it's ridiculous. And then they cut you off whenever they want. Joe Biden, who's agreed to a virtual debate, was today throwing up his hands. We don't know what the president's going to do. He changes his mind every second. So for me to comment on that now would be irresponsible. I think that if I'm going to follow the commission recommendation, if he goes off and he's going to have a rally, I'll, 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 I don't know what I'll do. The strategy of the president pre-illness had been to change the subject away from the pandemic. Now he seems to be embracing it as a gift. I think this was a blessing from God that I caught it. This was a blessing in disguise. But for all that, he's still confined to quarters while Joe Biden is out campaigning, something that will add to the president's growing frustration. It's understandable that the president would much prefer to have an in-person debate, but arguably he's cutting off his nose to spite his face. All the polls suggest that Donald Trump is way behind Joe Biden and needs the debates as a way of resetting uh, the race. Now, a final debate is scheduled for the 22nd of October in Nashville. Frankly, I think there must be a question mark over whether that will happen as well. One other thing that's significant that has happened today, the Senate Majority Leader, a Republican, normally slavishly loyal to Donald Trump, has come out with absolute withering criticism of the White House's handling and has said that the President more or less has got what he deserves by the laxness over mask wearing and keeping social distancing. Maybe we're seeing the first cracks in Republican unity. Hugh. John, many thanks again. John Sopel with the latest thoughts there for us uh, in Washington. Now, President Trump says he is prepared to go ahead next week with the second televised debate against his Democratic rival Joe Biden, despite his treatment for COVID and ongoing questions about the true state of his health. The president returned to the White House from hospital last night and his doctors insist that he is in fact doing extremely well. Our North America editor John Sopel has the latest. When Donald Trump left the White House last Friday, he appeared dejected, fearful. But wow, his return last night couldn't have been more different. The former reality TV star knows how to make an entrance, and so had the White House turn it into a made-for-television spectacular, all deliberately timed so it could be taken live by the network news teams who were on air at the time. And after striding off Marine One, he walked up to the South Portico. And there, what was the first thing he did? He very deliberately removed his mask, even though he's still infectious. COVID, what's there to be frightened of? Don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. You're going to beat it. We have the best 
medical equipment. We have the best medicines, all developed recently. And you're going to beat it. I went, I didn't feel so good. And two days ago, I could have left two days ago. Two days ago, I felt great, like better than I have in a long time. I said just recently, better than 20 years ago. Although 210,000 Americans have died and over 7 million have been infected, this was Donald Trump presenting himself as the warrior president who'd seen off the hidden enemy. I stood out front. I led. Nobody that's a leader would not do what I did. And I know there's a risk, there's a danger, but that's OK. And now I'm better and maybe I'm immune. I don't know. There were numerous takes as the president all the time without a mask interacted with staff. And in swing state Pennsylvania, there are some pretty entrenched views. President Trump has not taken COVID seriously from, from day one. And if he did take it seriously, as I said, we would not be in this situation if, as a country, we addressed it. I think he tried not to scare the people. That's what it was. That's why he did what he did. I just don't understand how he could contract the COVID and then get released and come right out and get right on stage and take his mask right off and start talking to people. That's, that's crazy. His Democratic rival, meanwhile, was campaigning in Florida. He said he was glad to see the president back, but added this. Thank you all. Anybody who contracts the virus by essentially saying masks don't matter, social distancing doesn't matter, I think is, is, is responsible for what happens to them. The latest medical bulletin issued by the president's physician says that he had a restful night, was reporting no symptoms and his vitals were stable. But yesterday evening, after climbing the stairs, he was clearly gasping for breath. It may be there's a gap between the image he wants to project and a more fragile reality. It's fair to say in the past few days we haven't wanted for surprise developments, but Donald Trump has delivered another this afternoon. He's unilaterally collapsed the talks that were going on between congressional leaders on a new COVID stimulus package that would help the poor, the unemployed, small businesses. He did it to the surprise of Democrats and Republicans. The stock market has fallen sharply. No one saw that coming. John, many thanks again. John Sobel there for us with the latest at the White House.